We live. Greetings, 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 everyone. Thank you for joining us again for our third couple for the Black Love Series and Ode to Valentine's Day. And we've been learning so much and we're gonna continue to learn as we talk to our third couple and then our fourth couple coming. So keep staying tuned for this great, great, great venture that we're on. As you may already know, I am Dr. Tay, also known as Hey Dr. Tay. And I am joined today by my amazing collaborator. I don't know what side of the screen. I'm One I'm of these <laughs> Mr. Joseph Ward, who is an author, podcast host, and just an amazing, amazing initiate, initiative starter. He's so amazing in a lot of things he does. And I'm so glad I was able to drag him along the way with my yeah, drugs, key ideas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm happy to be here. We've actually been having fun. This is our second series that we've done. Um, you ask good questions. So the energy is good. I enjoy collaborating with you. And this Black Love series, it makes sense because we're two Black people who love being Black. And we want to make sure that we're part of promoting what true Black love is all about. We tied up the negative narratives. And we have these mediums to create our own narratives. So right. why wait for somebody else to do it when we can do it? So that's exactly. why we are happy to be here. Look, you said it better than I would, Joe. <laughs> Yeah. See, and you should have started the show. <laughs> but today we have another amazing couple, as I stated earlier. We have the Stuckies, yes, yes. which consists of Miss a Mrs. Adrian and Mr. Jason Stucky. As you notice, I always say the woman first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who <in> the world? <laughs> <laughs> right. And they're going to tell us so much. I'm so excited to get, dive into this. So I guess mm -hmm. um, I'll start off with the first question. And we always like to start off with who you are as an individual. So, of course, um, ladies first. Who I am as an individual? I like this question. It's a little different from like, what do you do? But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think as an individual, I'm a very family oriented person. I love, love, love my family. I love my family, which are people you get to choose as family. Yeah. Um, and I am an environmental health and safety attorney at Duke Energy, which is a utility company um, I, here in Cincinnati. Um, and I am just excited to be here. I love, to, one, talking about experiences that people don't talk about because that's yeah. how we grow and that's how we hopefully stay together yes. forever and ever. Uh, so we're really excited to talk to you guys. We, to your point, we've seen a lot of bad marriages and a lot of miscommunication. Right. Um, and so we are excited to talk about, you know, even though I can't believe it'll be three years soon, being married. Congratulations. <laughs> um, we, you know, and we are still young in our journey. That's good. A lot of people, but I think we've, really found a way to make it work. And so I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> Who I am as an individual, um, I'm really easygoing, kind of down to earth person um, who likes to kind of relax. I'm avid lover of sports. Um, I'm also a husband as an individual as well too. Um, and then in my career, I'm also a lawyer as well too, where I do labor and employment work representing school districts here in Ohio. So. I'm excited to be here today to share our experiences, to provide any advice that we can provide if folks want to take it as advice. Um, and so excited to be here. Right. Now that's it. It's definitely exciting what, what both of you do. So I want to start here for and start with both of you and we can go with Adrian and Jason. So when you're young, you're growing up, you know, you have all these aspirations. Our imagination is very wild. And we want to go from being teachers to firemen, to police officers, to astronauts. So was being a lawyer something that you both wanted to do as a child or along your journey? How did that come about where you say, OK, I want to be a lawyer and then actually pursuing the careers? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say I didn't like hop out the womb like, I'm gonna be a lawyer, y'all. But I don't even know if I play with lawyer toys, you know, like your parents got your toys, right? Or, right. I don't know. But I do think as I like progress, so I would say in college is when I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this thing. And late in college, so I was in my junior year. Now my okay. parents have always been whispered in my ear like, hmm, you argumentative, hmm, you could be, hmm, you gonna be a lawyer. <laughs> But I, was, but I 
think that was more of like, we see what you can do and what your mind is doing. And we mm -hmm. want to channel that energy to something that one, you'll be good at and let's make some money. So right. <laughs> I think it was a bit of both. So my parents have kind of always been that way. And, you know, it's like, mm, I'm going to do my own path, but I am exactly where I want and need to be. Um, and I, you know, God's counsel also is <laughs> why I have led, because I didn't choose environmental law. I tell many people that I went to school thinking I was going to be a, or law school, thinking I was going to be a criminal defense attorney, to be out here getting them. And then I was like, I cried the little mermaid. That's not going to work. Like, <laughs> it's going to work for my mental health. Um, right. There are other things, other ways that you can be give to those causes or give of your time. But I was like, I can't do that day in and day out. So that was something that I learned early on in law school, think, thankfully, and kind of just fell into environmental law. Worked for the Natural Resource Defense Council my okay. second year because my one of my line sisters worked there. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I think it's who you know, right? And you don't know what you want to do until you actually get into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, environmental health and safety is like, I'm a nerd, like Dr. Tay. And so <laughs> I love like the intersect between science, math, or engineering and the law, which is kind of right. what it brings together. Well, for me, it's probably a little different. Um, I think I knew for a while that I wanted to be an attorney. Okay. My parents always told me like, Jason, you like to argue, you like to reason too much, so this is what you need to do. And I said, no, that's not what I wanted to do. And then I saw the movie Jerry Maguire. Mm. Uh, I was probably was like 11 or 12, and I was like, that's what I want to do. I want right. to uh, I want to be able to have the opportunity to like go to order the games for free and to like negotiate all the deals and be behind the scenes. So like, this is what I want to do. And my mom was like, well, you know, I think this was her way of pushing me to be a lawyer. She's like, well, you know that most sports agents have a law degree. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I didn't know that, but if that's what it takes, then that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. So I got involved in this program here in Cincinnati that really, for black kids who are interested in becoming lawyers and you got placed in corporations and law firms. And I was like, oh yeah, this is definitely what I wanted to do. But then the sports agent thing kind of dwindled when I realized that there were so many different aspects that you could do when practicing law. Right. So, um, Shout I, out to Swell. Swell, yeah, summer work Swell. experience in law with the program's called here in Cincinnati. Okay. Um, and, and so jumped in on that and I was like, you know, there are other things I could do and then kind of matriculated through the program. And um, in my career, we'll talk about this where Adrian and I kind of met was at the attorney general's office. I started there and, and uh, I had to stop and then Adrian moved to Cincinnati where I'm from. And so I ended up taking a job down here before getting the job that I have now. But you know, I'm, I'm certain that I'm doing um, what I should be doing and I enjoy like interacting with people. So the fact that my practice has a lot of people interaction, even though sometimes people do a lot of crazy things and that's what I deal right. with. But it, it's still good, and I really do enjoy it. Right. So I and I enjoyed that, and I wanted to make sure I give a follow up question to what you both have stated in reference to your careers and stuff. Because one part of the Black Love series is to also expose individuals to these different types of groups we may not know about. Right. Before, I mean, of course, AJ and I grew up together. So, being her friend, I've learned about what an environment, <laughs> what it means to be a lawyer, and specifically like the different areas that you could be a lawyer in. So, can you talk more and probably provide like an example, both of you, as far as being a lawyer in your particular area? What does that exactly mean? Because I think every time we think of lawyers, we're thinking, you're going to get us off on these tickets that I got. Right. I'm not going to jail. Don't the table. Table. <laughs> right. That is, right. That's a great point. So do not call us if you're in jail because we cannot help you. <laughs> and I would say, listen, you need to call a lawyer and it ain't me. So that, that's number one. So what, what I do, though, is I would likely represent, you know, your employer if you are showing up late to work and they say, hey, you know what? Uh, Dr. Tay is not following the policy, and so we're going to have to do something with her case. And what does the policy say in order 
for us to um, maybe, you know, suspend her, you know, dock her pay. So that's kind of what I do. I also get involved. <laughs> like, wait, that's not what I do. Um, also get involved if an employee files some type of discrimination claim against their employer mm -hmm. and you know, represent the employer in court um, and dealing with those issues. And then the, the final aspect of what I do is dealing with like late, what we call labor issues. So those are issues where you hear about, you know, teacher strikes or teacher contract negotiations. Um, we oftentimes represent the school districts as their chief negotiator when we're negotiating a new teacher collective bargaining agreement or contract, how to prevent those strikes from happening. So that that's what I do. And that's all you can call me about. Don't call me about anything else related to <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, so environmental health and safety, people often look cross-eyed. They're like, I don't know what you talk about, girls. So what I do is I represent um, Duke Energy on the compliance side. So what, one, I make sure we're complying with the environmental law. That's the bare minimum, right? Um, make sure our machines are working and have the right equipment um, as, and people might not know, so EPA and all the state environmental, so Environmental Protection Agency and all the state environmental protection agencies give companies, manufacturers, permits to pollute up to a certain extent, right? So it's there are certain guidelines that you have to follow when it comes to air, water, um, waste. And so where your waste goes is important. If it's hazardous, then that's got to go into a certain landfill. If it's just what we call solid waste, which is our lower, you, you think of the, per, the trash man comes to pick up your trash, that's solid waste, right? Usually okay. it's not hazardous. It doesn't have anything that's going to stick around for years and years and years. Right. Um, so that is what I do when I make sure they're on the straight and narrow with the environmental side. Um, all, you know, sometimes we have to work with the agencies if we have a weird, weird issues come up all the time where, you know, our machine is not working and maybe it's emitting a little more pollution than we thought. We need to get them involved quickly and to ha know what our corrective action plan is going to be in order to well, hopefully not get pen penalties. But keeping in mind, we know if there's a violation that's could be that could happen but environmental penalties are like real 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 real, real big <laughs> and so we are always wanting to work with the agency once we get our hands around a situation and then the other side of the house is health and safety which i feel like my last two years have been i've been swamped with health and safety work and so what that means is someone gets hurt someone unfortunately lose their life because maybe they weren't following all the safety rules or maybe there was this crazy thing that happened. They, for instance, um, there was a case where man cut his fall protection while he was on a pole with a chainsaw. This had never happened, guys. Like this, not in all, n none of the utilities had anything like this happen. Right. And so OSHA, the Occupational Safety Health or um, organization, they come in and they'll like inspect the area, they'll inspect the incident, and then they decide if they're going to issue what they, we call citations, which are basically violations of the law. Um, and so I do a lot of that work. That's not my everyday work, thank goodness, but we've had a couple of fatalities since I've been there. And those are really, really tough days, as Jason knows. It usually starts early in the morning because these things happen at like 6 a.m. when yeah. someone's run into a pole and they're replacing the electricity. It's just really tough to hear because it's the details are never ever interesting. I mean, not interesting. It's always sad, right? It's right. always really, really sad. You think about those families. Um, and the th at the end of the day, we want all our people to go home safely. We don't right. want to be, you know, that's number one. And so working through those issues making our organization better, where do we have certain gaps? That's where I come in and I like to come in at the beginning, right, before anything like that happens. Um, but that's that's like mostly what I do for the company. Okay. Right, thank, thank you, you all. Thank you for that. Yeah, so I, so I got to follow up to that. Um, and I do want to say this is a safe space for nerds because we like the coolest nerds <laughs> on earth up in here yeah. that we represent. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I, I, I think uh, what both of you do is very, very, very important and it's very critical, especially to our community dealing with labor and environmental things, because oftentimes we overlook those areas, but they impact how we exist on a regular basis. Right. And so I do my day job is HIV AIDS and this is, it, it's an emotional roller coaster every day. Like just this week, we're trying to prevent at least three young black men from from contracting HIV and just interacting with them. It's it can be emotionally draining. So when you have those days where your your strings are pulled, your emotional strings are pulled, how do both of you, how do you come home and and like decompress and get the stress off and not be able to take those emotions to bed or even into the next day? I think it's important and, and COVID has I think changed this a little bit. It's a lot easier since we're both working from home. Right. Just to be like, all right, um, you know, if I want to talk to Adrian about something that's going on at work, I can do that. I can pop up there and do that, which is nice as opposed to before you'd have to wait until you got home to talk about it. And it could kind of bleed into the night. Right. And I think on those difficult days, what I try to do, at least I don't know if I've told you this, but what I try to do is I try to, I'm not saying that I always do this, but it, you know, after a certain time, you just kind of just, you just got to let it go and talk about other stuff because work is, I mean, work, work is work. Um, mm -hmm. Day, there are far more important things to me, at least, in life than work. So, you know, you kind of decompress, you, you get it out of your system, but you don't let it take over the, your, your life or your day or your, the time that we get to spend together mm -hmm. because that 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 time's important. So, right. not to, to, to let it bleed into other aspects of the life. But I think it's important to talk about it, let it out, and then and try to move on. That's so interesting. I did not think he was going to say that. I thought he was going to be like, TV! Because <laughs> I'm like, I watch Love Island. <laughs> no, I like, so I'm just not even a really TV person. I'm a TV person with Jason. So I watch, we watch things together. But right. rarely am I watching a show without him because I'd rather, like, I'm one of those people that still gets Essence magazine. I'm a magazine reader. And I think in 2020. One, there's not a lot of magazine readers, right. especially at our age. Right. <laughs> Your Dr. Tay is like, what? But that's the Everything's thing. on the internet. I like <laughs> love to read. I like yeah. to read things that are a little he less heavy. Like I read a heavy book on G in January earlier this year, and I was like, okay, the next one cannot be that. <laughs> um, and it does help that now with COVID, we are in the house, so I'm like working with my coworker downstairs. Yes, yes. I'm like, Jason, guess what happened? <laughs> um, and, so, and so I think I piggyback off of Jason. I also, so I haven't done it in a while, but meditation, Jason has started yeah, meditating yes. like in the yeah. lab. Mm. And I have found like breathing exercises to be so, so helpful in, during the day, but I have definitely lost track of that. And so I think I need to, one, you're reminding me that I need to bring that back. But the way that, if you just take five minutes, that can make such a difference yes. in such a busy day. And, and I mean, I don't know what your, like, what your job is like, but I have been meetings back to back to back all day, right? And now they're virtual meetings, right? So right. it's like, great, at least I can just be professional up top and party down the bottom. Right. But it's still like, it's it's draining. And it so is. I try to make sure my meetings have at least, at least 30 minutes in between. It don't always work out like that because people don't care about your time. But um, I would say breathing in between, walking, uh, walking during the summer, mm. I'm not walking in this cold. <laughs> oh, that helped. That's why Dr. Tay was like, you need a dog. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, no, and I will say that meditation thing, I mean, for the agents, I mean, there, there were periods of time where I was having trouble sleeping because work was becoming pretty mm -hmm. bad, the meditation really worked wonders. So I would highly, highly recommend that. It, it's yeah. excellent. Um, something else that we've done that's actually right behind this screen is I uh, we've been working on this a thousand piece puzzle. So Adrian, like you're not a TV person, but I certainly recognize that your time you can't be watching TV all the time. So we've done this puzzle together. We we working through it, we're struggling. <laughs> it's been fun. It's the been good. And it, it keeps your mind going and kind of keeps your mind shut. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. So 
So I'm going to rewind it a little bit because Jason, you were hitting on it, but we didn't go into, and y'all know I'm nosy. I already know most of your story, but I want the other people that are watching to be able to know all the details as well, because I think you have an amazing story as to how you met and, you know, the longevity of your relationship and then when you decided to tie it, not how you did those things and so on. So please provide us the story. <laughs> yeah, so let me tell you the story from Jason's perspective. <laughs> I'm waiting on that. So this is what happened. So we, um, when I was studying for the bar, that would have been 23. 13, the summer of 2013. He's a year ahead of me, so I'm 2014. Yes. Um, one of Adrian's law school classmates for, who went to Notre Dame with her um, was studying in Cincinnati. And we were in like this big group chat or what have you. And so I met, her name is Brittany Brantley. We'll call her our Ooh. matchmaker. And so I met <laughs> Brittany. And then fast forward to like December of 2013. Uh, Brittany had put Adrian in contact with me and tried to connect us because Adrian was going to be starting at the Attorney General's office in Columbus the year afterwards, and she did not know anybody in Columbus. So Adrian decided to slide in my DM. Oh! On, <laughs> Another on, DM story. On and said, hey, Mr. Stuckey, um, I am okay. going to be moving to Columbus. And I, you know, just wanted to know if we could connect. I would want, love to get to know you. And I responded back and she put her number in there. And, you know, it's funny. I, I looked so hard for this message. And I think LinkedIn deleted it. Or Adrian deleted it, it somehow. <laughs> I cannot wait. I'm going to find it. I'm going to have to eat it. Get out of here. <laughs> but anyway, so then we fast forward to the summer of 2014. And I think Adrian had let me know that she had moved into Columbus. And she, I don't know if you were looking for a piece of furniture mm -hmm. or I was moving. So I was moving from my old apartment to a new apartment and I had this coffee table that I was just not going to do <laughs> anymore. So I said, hey, if you want this, it's free, it's yours. And so then she came to my door and I, I remember what she was wearing. She had a white t-shirt <laughs> on and she had these green <laughs> Notre Dame um, booty shorts is what they call them. <laughs> Um, I was from the back, and so she, um, so she was, she was going, she was going to have me put this coffee table into her uh, moving truck, and then she was going to drive away. I was like, well, how are you going to get it out? So I went with her to take her apartment, and then I guess you could say the rest after that kind of just Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. I part. I'm like, was it DMs? It I was definitely a DM. Wrong. Adrian was sliding in the DMs before it was a thing. The original. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes, and I mean, how, I I don't know. It's divine intervention. Because apparently, like, Black women finding a husband in Columbus is like 1%. I was like, wow. wow. <laughs> I, I, like, read that somewhere. I was like, I'm not going to find nobody here, am I? But right. Jason, like, our first meeting was him giving me something. Like, that's really powerful. Like, mm. he's definitely a giver mm. um, in, in spirit. Right. And so I could see that even early on. And I remember having a conversation with my mom. I'm not, I'm gonna try not to cry because I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those emotional people. But I was having a conversation with my mom maybe after our third date. And we're not even gonna talk about where he took me for our first date. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember saying to my mom, like, I really, really like this man. And I could see marrying him. And she was mm -hmm. like, where is my daughter? What have you done with her? Because she's, I just have always been kind of like, look, I'm here for my career and that's all that. Right. Um, but when someone comes into your life and you're when you're not looking, that's when it really happens. And I think for me, you know, that's kind of cliche, but that is what happened. Absolutely. Um, so. Yeah, we went to Skyline, Chile. I don't know, y'all probably aren't even familiar with that, but it's a Cincinnati thing. Cincinnati people love it. And I'm like, when I got my meal for free, I was like, did you do this on purpose? I didn't know that. I was just paying. They said it's free. I was like, even better. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, I, that's also what I found out that my husband is frugal, mm -hmm. which is great because I'm frugal too. <laughs> they are. They are. So I'm going to give a follow up question based on that. So I know that you did a special already on this, but I wanted you to talk about how you saved so much with your wedding and about the wedding day and so on. 
absolutely. Yeah. I'm so, okay. So 2014, we met and then we dated what till 20 or well, dated 2016. Mm -hmm. We got engaged and then 27. or 2017, mm -hmm. we got engaged in 2018. We got married in March. And so it was very important that we not go into debt, more debt, I should say, right. um, for our wedding. Cause we, one, we, we have future goals, right? We're like we want to build on what what we have, um, and thank thankfully we had moved from jobs that weren't as much money early on, but were astronomically more money later. Like, like I moved to a law firm, Jason moved to a law firm, and so that helped us save a lot of our money. We're one of those people. We like we live below our means, right? I know I can live, I can live probably off but way less than what I make. Um, but we stacked away so much cash for the wedding. Yeah, we, <laughs> we were like, it was automatic save. We, of course, our parents helped. Mm -hmm. um, that conversation was awkward for me. Not, my mom is always like, oh, I'm gonna help. But I think, you know, my parents had unfortunately gone through a divorce I would say shortly before we got married. And so there was like tension between my mom and my dad and tension honestly between our, our, you know, me and my brother and my dad. And so that was hard to ask, but my, I, I credit all my money. I don't know, since and like, you need to save, you need to do this. You need to 401k X, Y, Z to my dad because he is, absolutely a money genius. And he's like, time, time is what I don't have, but time is what you have. And so it was very hard to ask him like, okay, dad, can you help with our wedding? Because things, I mean, like my dad didn't come to my law school graduation because it was like so tense between our parents. And so, um, so that was really hard, but it turned out to be great because he was so helpful. Both are um, all, both our parents mm -hmm. were so mm -hmm. helpful. I had like my aunt create a, you know, a card box. She like built it out of cereal boxes. It was like most beautiful thing ever. <laughs> like what the yeah. hard thing? Just hacking into people's gifts. Mm -hmm. People love helping, right? It's, I mean, I have so much family. Jason's like, yeah, it was like half, it was like 80% Adrian's family. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I think I can invite 20 friends. So it's <laughs> very, it was just building on community, right? Which is always so important to right. African Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, there were ways that we cut costs on, mm -hmm. you know, suits. Mm, yeah. I, you know, I mean, to add to, I mean, I, I think what we started with, which was helpful, was we started with a spreadsheet and a budget. Yes. And we were like, this is what we know we can do. Like, right. we the numbers and we projected it out. This is what I like to do. Adrian says, I like to, to spend money we don't have in a way that I like to project it out so I know what we will have in the future and mm -hmm. say, hey, that money is going to be gone. And so we, we looked at it from March of 2017 to March of 2018. How much could we possibly save? And mm -hmm. looked at that. That was, and, and we were really realistic. It wasn't just like, oh, all right, this is a aspirational goal. No, this was realistic. If we automatically took it out of our paychecks and it went into an account, mm -hmm. this is what we could save. And then when we looked at that, we then made a determination on what was the venue we could use. Mm -hmm. um, if we needed to ask our parents for money, what that needed to look like. Um, and, and then I think if you have concrete numbers, that's really helpful. Right. Using family gift. I mean, Adrian's family came in huge. I mean, a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, we got a good DJ for a good price. Wasn't a family person, but it was like a recommendation. Yeah. Um, we also had a day of planner who Phenomenal. was amazing. I'll tell anyone who is going to get married in the next year or so, or even in the future, that is my, probably the best money yes. I think I've ever spent. I mean, yes. it just makes your day go very well. And it's really not terribly expensive too. Mm -hmm. right. um, and then the venue was great. And then the venue, we picked a venue where we could bring our own alcohol because that mm -hmm. significantly reduced the cost of, on that space. And we right. actually, so what we did was we bought the alcohol 
from a liquor store here in Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. And then we drove to Virginia and, and took it with us. And the we, wine was from Aldi, y'all. No, but it was good. It was good. They That's was good. Right. Black right. Right. So, so, I mean, we say all that to say, because I think we were reading something where there are a good amount of folks who take out a loan for their wedding, which to me is completely setting off on the wrong foot. And for two final things with that. So included in our wedding budget, we also included our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. So we knew that we wanted that to be that free as well too. And then the final thing, and this was probably the most important to us, was we did not want to start our marriage in debt because of a wedding, because they're more important things. A house, is more important than than to us a wedding. It's one day. It's great. It's a great experience. And we we love our wedding. Yes, you know, we do. Right. But, after Tay was a part. Yes, of but we, we there was. <laughs> I think that's something to always right. mind as well too. Absolutely, it's more. It's more about the day. It's about the marriage. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, you know, Jason didn't talk. We we actually did marriage counseling with a uh, pastor okay. here, our um pastor at our church, because. We see it's like top four things that like destroy marriages. And we've also seen our parents yes, and we yes. see the same things. It's yes. like communication, money, people don't mm -hmm. worry about money. And then I think the other one is like, you know, child rearing or how yeah. to raise yeah. your kids. We're not there yet, but mm -hmm. it, but we hope to be there. And it's like, I, if we can get on the right foot about money and communication, mm -hmm. Now, then we're gonna build on that foundation later. Right. Um, yes. And yeah, that's that's so huge. Knowing that that your spouse and you know we are kind of of the same cloth that we're savers. But homegirl like to go to Bath and Body Works, okay? So I'm gonna have my little budget, or I, I like to buy. I'm like, ooh, I want it in the in essence. I'm gonna buy that. I love before my businesses. Like that's that's kind of buy these little tr trinkets, but. That is a part of the budget, right? right. Like that is, and we have an understanding. Jason's purchases are are bigger, but fewer, like farther in between. He's like, I'm gonna get a Peloton today. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> he's like one of those people that'll save for that. He's like, all right, I want a freaking two thousand dollar bike. And I'm gonna be like, I think I'll get two hundred, one hundred dollar things. <laughs> no, but so that is good to know because I mean, my just as an example, my mom and my dad oh, yeah, are opposites. My mom is a spender, and my dad is a saver. But like, they right. were both bad. So, so they were both at the extreme. I would say, of right. course, mom. My mom's always like, I know how to use money. I'm like, I know, mom, but you are a spender by. That's what you're you're wanting to do, and mm -hmm. she will. You know, she's like, "Got it." But my dad saves too much, where then you can't really you can't go on vacation. Mm -hmm. You don't do all you do is work. So that's right. not good. That's not good. Right. Um, and so I think we're looking at our parents like, "Oh, okay, we don't want that." I would rather talk you through it and be like, "Look, I'm." About Okay. <laughs> How are we gonna get here? Or you know, maybe not today. Let's do it in the future. You know, talking through those issues makes a yeah, world of important. difference. I think. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. I mean, we could talk about the money aspect all day. I mean, That's my true. parents were both spenders. Hopefully, they don't see this because like, <laughs> <laughs> they're both spenders. And so to me, that taught me like that's not how I want to live my life because right. it eventually goes away. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing too, which which is really funny because if, if you know Adrian, you know she can be very strong and, and bullheaded. Me? Um, and so one of the things we were talking about after we got engaged was you know whether or not we were going to have a joint account versus a separate account. Mm -hmm. And so Adrian looked at me and said, there is no way in the world that I'm going to have a joint account. That we're going to have our money be separate. And so I said to her, I said, you know, I, I think that there are a lot of benefits of having a joint account. It builds good communication because you have to talk through purchases. And I think it provides, um, it also provides another level of intimacy because you have to, you have to talk about these things yeah. together in this process. And there's a there, there really ain't no secrets because you know I know what she's spending and she knows what I'm spending. Um, and so we actually came around to it and she's like, I can see the benefits of it. Um, I like to say whenever Adrian, I'll tell Adrian something and then she talks to somebody else and then she eventually comes around to what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but she gets there, she eventually gets there. 
And and I think for us, I mean, that that's really been, you know, really, really helpful in our relationship because we'll sit down on Saturdays and we'll talk about, hey, what's going on with the budget this week? Let's talk through this. Mm -hmm. And then I think it also bleeds into other parts and things that we want to do and our hopes and dreams and wishes. So, you know, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has, um, you know, what they want to do and everybody's opinions or, or money are different. But I certainly I think it's for us. It's, it's been helpful. Nah, that's now nah, that's incredible. Like I'm sitting back here, I'm taking notes and stuff. So, <laughs> so I need a I need a table that I need to get rid of. I need a moving truck. I need all those things. Need a good bank account. All right, I'm taking my notes. But <laughs> no, okay. So you all have a very realistic view and very realistic relationship. It's not some hey, we met and we just fell in love happily ever after with no details in between, right? Because that's what we saw growing up. Like the Disney Channel just messed people's lives up. Right? <laughs> so, so how did how did you all avoid the 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 fairy tale love, the stereotypical fairy tale love? How did you avoid that and would be able to come into your relationship with realistic expectations and build upon that? That's a really that's a good, good question. question. But I, you know, I so I, I think before we were engaged, I, I think it was just being open and being willing to talk about stuff. Um, I mean, we would oftentimes have really good, deep conversations about I mean, anything. I mean, I think yeah. talking about, you know, both of our the relationship with our parents and how both of our parents are divorced and kind of talking through some of those issues. I think for me, at least it was, you know, you've seen stuff that didn't work. And I think oftentimes people think that that's something that can scar you. But I took it as I saw what didn't work and I saw where some of the fractures were, where the cracks were in that relationship. So you use that to say, well, I don't want things to go that way. So let's right. stop it before right. it gets there. I think we would have really good um, conversations around that. And I think, our, once again, our, our premarital counseling was excellent. And I think one of the things that we talked about were what you said, Joe, expectations. And so one of the things the pastor said were, what are your expectations of Adrian once you get married? Because oftentimes when you get into a marriage, people don't talk about their expectations. Mm -hmm. they think, Adrian expects me to take out the trash. I know that. So if I do not take out the trash, <laughs> that is something that is going to get on her nerves. Um, so, you know, and, and that's that's a small thing, but right. but it's good to talk about what your expectations on a relationship because oftentimes that's where you're gonna have cross wide. Right. So I, I really I mean, this sounds so cliche, but it, it's true. And I think that oftentimes we don't sit and talk about our issues. We, we keep stuff from each other. And so communication really is key and, and not and being okay to be vulnerable because I think people get into a relationship and they think, you know, you could be with someone 10 years and you're afraid to be vulnerable with that person. And mm -hmm. that's not going to lead you close. So I think that we have this understanding that in order for this to work, we're going to have to communicate. We're going to have to be vulnerable. If not, it's not going to work. Right. Yeah, and I would um, piggyback off of that. So I think, so So anyone who knows me is I, knows that I'm pretty much an optimist when it comes to life. Like, I try to have the rose-colored glasses, like, oh, maybe there's a silver lining. But I think when it came to relationships, I was always a pessimist. Always, like, something's off about you or and and not always looking inwardly and also knowing that I had issues so I am can be I told Jason early on like if I get upset I will not talk to you because that's what I saw when, you know, when my dad would get upset to, at my mom I mean and that would go like days and I'm like something is off this is crazy but I and I'm not that extreme but I I was like I will get silent and Jason knows that about me because I told him this. And I don't know, early on I got mad about something silly. I can barely remember. I'm like, what? <laughs> but I remember Jason being relentless. He would be like, hi, mm -hmm. yeah, you wanna talk to me? Or you're gonna talk to me. Me, me, me. <laughs> I can't even like not talk to him without smiling. So he knows that that, like knowing what your partner mm -hmm. needs to is important. Mm -hmm. you right. know that if they tell you or, you see it after patterns. And so I think being pessimistic led me to be like, okay, these are the things that's going on in my life and here's why I act like this. Please check because I might not even see it in myself. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Because we are, we become our parents, right? It's like, what's that? Yeah. Gacko commercial? It might not be Gacko, but it's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know what you're talking about. I mean, like, yes, you do. Everyone has a salad button. So, like, we become our parents, and I know I'm cranky <laughs> every day. Every time I make a list, I'm like, hmm, that's my mama. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I look at my bank account every freaking day, I'm like, hmm, that's my dad. So, <laughs> figuring like he said, like communication. And so one interesting thing that my, our pastor did is we wrote a letter to each other and we're only supposed to open it when it gets like really hard and Mm -hmm. not like y'all are just not feeling each other. And so that letter has remained unopened for the last almost three years. Hopefully, But that's one of those, I think, intimacy things that you look back at what you wrote three, five, seven years ago. And you're like, this is why I did this. This is Mm. why we love each other. Yes, things, circumstances have changed and even you have changed, right? We change, I think, pretty often. Um, Convince me with the two bank accounts. I mean, I mean, the one bank account. (laughs) But I think that is like realizing that you're going to transform and grow together right right but not in <clears throat> thinking you're going to change someone because right that ain't that's gonna not happen. Gonna happen. <laughs> right right, right. It happens when the person wants to change right. individually not because you want them to change so exactly so so let's talk about that a little bit so um, one thing that Joe and I have been learning in the other couple interviews was, you know, the fact that you come in as this individual and then you realize that you're still evolving as an individual, but you're also going to evolve together as a couple. Um, what are some of those, you know, hallmark moments that you think of when, you know, you think of that particular topic and then were there any challenges that you went through? This is kind of like a two, three part question. Sorry. <laughs> Were there any challenges that you went through and then how did you get past those moments in your relationship and in your development of yourself? Man, all right, well, to answer the first part of the question, and then <laughs> see if I can get to the second part. So, you know, looking at yourself as a couple as opposed to an individual, that letter was actually um, pretty groundbreaking for me and something that I keep in mind always. So we we're supposed to write the letter, Adrian, Adrian will do it whatever she's supposed to do at that minute. I have a slight procrastination. I think it's a family trait. I'm not gonna blame it on myself. So it took me a little longer to, to draft the letter. Right. And so we came to a session of the marriage counseling. I didn't have the letter until the pastor said to me, he said, Jason, the fact that you did not do the letter, even though you probably had every good intention to do it and that you're going to do it. But he said, but that signifies to Adrian that you don't care about your relationship which is not, obviously I care, but but that's, yeah. that's what it shows. And so you always have to think about that whatever you do and your actions always reflect on you two as a couple as opposed to you as an individual. And I think ever since that moment, that was kind of like a light for me to like, always think about that and always to have that in the back of my mind. And so obviously continuing to evolve, with that, but that that's really, really key and really, really important. I don't think I ever told you that. You did. <laughs> so, I was like, I don't even remember that happening. Well, yeah. But so, <laughs> um, to the second part, you know, a different, a difficult moment, how we got through it. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking about, you know, that, and I think one thing that was probably a couple of things I think that have been difficult for us. One, I think, um, we were long distance for a little bit. And so that was difficult. And that was before we got uh, married and it was, well, are we gonna stay together? Adrian apparently had no doubt in her mind that we were gonna stay together. Um, but that, I mean, that, really was, that was six months, but I ended up, but I think at that point in time I knew, so I ended up getting a job here in Cincinnati. But there have also been times where we've disagreed necessarily on job opportunities. And um, whether or not one of us should pursue an opportunity or whether one of us uh, believed that the employer was treating him right, so you needed to stay with that person, stay with that uh, employer. And so I I think that that, those have caused some tense moments between us, but I think that ultimately, once again, just kind of talking through some of those and and, and trusting what um, we believe is best for us and what we're working out. Yeah. Man, that was a good Hallmark moment. 
Um, well, and, and I think the challenges that he brought up were definitely the ones that I thought through. Because I have to oftentimes like think really hard about the last time I was like mad at Jason, which I think a lot of people are like, what? Right. <laughs> but that's just, I don't know, that's just the nature of our relationship. I will say, he was playing Ella May's CD when it came out so many, so many times. I was like, enraged. I was like, I can't listen to this anymore because I hate when Ella May talks in between the albums and I'm like, I'm going to punch him if he, make, if he plays this album. I do know what was wrong with me. It was irrational. I was mad. Okay. <laughs> that aside. <laughs> I would definitely say that we get mad at each other. Well, I get upset at Jason because sometimes I'm like, Jason, you're like, you can do this. You you need to leave them. You need more money. You know, I think I, and I take this because his mom also is like, she even told me, and she wrote me a really nice letter that I read on my wedding day. And I'm, I'm like tearing up thinking about it, but she was like, you're going to have to push Jason. Like he can do phenomenal things, but you might have to push him. And so I think it's a, a little bit of that that's in me. And then I'm already and individually ambitious. I think together we're very ambitious, but I'm like, Jason, you can do this. Go screw them, say, I'm leaving. Or if you don't give me that money, I'm like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, but I'm like, I quit. But it's, I think it's a part of wanting more for yeah. your partner. But, but also, you know, it's always like, is this selfish? Like having to think about not just me, but us. Um, mm. And I'm trying to think when that happened because that has definitely changed in our relationship. Even when you think about, so my utility company is based out of Charlotte. So everyone says, hey, you gotta move to Charlotte if you want to advance. Right now I'm cool in my career. I don't like to be outside of headquarters doing my thing. But I mean, if that is something that we're really gonna you know, pursue or think about as we, growing a family it's like that's going to be something that could cause tension i mean jason loves charlotte because he went to johnson c smith but it's it's different when you are moving an entire family or you know his mom is his family is here and so it's i think that has been um a challenge and i've i've had challenges leaving my nest like from Virginia, and I think Jason sees that in me, like, <laughs> I miss all my friends, I miss my family, you know, I don't get to see my mom and dad often, and so, but, you know, distance makes the heart grow fonder, allegedly, but I'm like, <laughs> really forget me, I'm just kidding, oh, no, I'm just kidding. but I think that has been a challenge for us together, because yeah. Jason, like, has all his high school friends, and I'm like, <laughs> and it's, you know, he has his community, and then I, I can't be that mad, right? I brought him back. <laughs> yes. yes, and I think that's a good point because I think that we both are invested in our careers, and there, it's more than likely going to come to a head at some point in time yeah. where someone's going to get a great opportunity, and mm -hmm. they have to, you know, take a step back in their career because of that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that that certainly could. Um, cause and strife, but I think once again, we talk about it, and if Adrian gets an opportunity to do something, I'm fully going to support her, especially if it's something where I can be a stay-at-home dad, so oh. I'm completely on board with that. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> see, we got to throw out the narrative, right? <laughs> nah, that's so cool. All right, so you all you all have great chemistry, the personalities, you you all have that, and it, and it seems like you all have a, a great time together. And to, to piggyback off what you were saying, healthy relationships should be the norm. We understand that, okay, most people, we know we got love and hip hop, all this Jerry Springer, more poet stuff we grew up on. Um, I know in my personal life, my parents divorced when I was five. I have only one memory of my parents actually interacting with each other. And so how did you all really, really set your overall boundaries for your relationship? And like you say, even even in the point where you you were in a long distance relationship, like how was you able to make that work and also be able to set the proper boundaries for your relationship to grow properly? I'll let you go first. What? <laughs> I would say with the, 
long distance thing. So we were about an hour and a half away from each other. So we're, he was in Columbus, I was in Cincinnati. Um, and according to Jason, he'd be like, it was really, it's really like an hour and 15 minutes. I'm like, well, I didn't you know how you drive. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think we, so we didn't do every weekend. We probably did every Another other weekend. weekend. Yeah. Um, just because it's tiring to be on the road and mm -hmm. uh, Friday, Fridays are hard. Y'all know. Yes. Yes. Like, I just want to sleep. So um, I think one of the boundaries that we set early on is how much we share with our friends. Um, and, you know, we're not oversharers on social media. You know, yeah. I think that is hard for people. Yes, it is. It <laughs> is. I'm like, let, and I, I would, I definitely say I share more than even Jason. Jason like posts once a year. <laughs> it's like our birthdays. So it's, um, so I would say that was a boundary early on that we're like, okay, privacy is important and you need to, you know, like we need to talk about what you're t saying to your friends um, because they can, sometimes your friends get involved like you are and it's like, that's not your significant other or your husband. <laughs> so yeah. chill. Um, and people are so quick to judge, right? Because they love you and they're like, oh, I don't know if that, or they'll even judge you for like feeling a type of way. And you're like, yeah. you're perfect. And you're like, okay, <laughs> no one's perfect, but <laughs> clearly you, you need to get your shit together. So I'm sorry. Um, I was, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say that was important in our boundaries because we have a lot of friends. Yes, you know, I yes. think we, have, we have a lot of community and people around, but it's important to know that it's the two of you. And sometimes those boundaries were set with my mom too. So, like, I love, love, love my mom. She okay. is like my friend. She is my best friend. I would mm -hmm. say, and so. You know, and there's some things your mom don't want to hear about. And she going to be like, ah, stop. <laughs> but I think that sometimes I even share too much with her. And it's like, okay, I got to pull back. Right. Um, this is something we need to figure out first before I'm like, mom, guess what he did? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. What yeah, I mean, I, I I think that you hit all the key points. It's, it's making sure that, you know, we talk, we come to each other first yeah. instead of going to somebody else. And we, we actually did talk about this, about, I think Adrian had asked me the question, like, you know, what would you feel uncomfortable with me sharing with one of my friends? Mm -hmm. um, and I said, you know, I I really, once again, go back to what I said at the beginning. Exactly. I'm really, I'm really easy going. So I'm like, you can share with what you want to, but I just, would just hope that you share the same thing with me now. I mean, you may share it in a different way with your friends. I get that. But, you know, as long as we're having a conversation mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, right. you, you need that outlet. You yeah. need to you need to talk to your friends because uh, that's part of your friendship. So right. that that's okay. Um, but in terms of, like, with other people, um, maybe, like, outside of your friends, I mean, just being over. Oh, Adrian has male friends. I'm fine with that. That, that's fine. We like, talked about that. We that talk was about a, yes. I mean, I think that was an early okay. time, wasn't yes, it? Yes. So, yeah, and, and, and knowing where, you know, we're knowing, but she know, we both know where the boundaries are. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and right. being open and honest about that yeah. is key. And then I think that that really leads to, you know, you can have those boundaries and be okay with them if you trust your partner. Right. And right. Those are, you know, very long way. I trust Adrian 100. So I have you know, no concerns about that. And really, once again, I keep saying it, but it comes back to communication. You communicate, you talk about it. That I think it alleviates a lot of those concerns. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so I have. I'm sorry. I have I this felt, one I question. I'm sorry, <laughs> but this is for Jason. And, and the self esteem in men is not often talked about. It's it's almost as if men don't have self esteem sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, because you talked about the trust and and not having a a issue with her having male friends because you all have communication, you have trust. But did it take you time to get there, or was your or was your self esteem already in the place you had already worked on yourself be before? You all got married or before you got serious in a relationship to where she would say, OK, I have male friends and you all you said, OK, 
it's not going to be something intimidating to me, but we are going to make sure we set our boundaries. Like, how did you get right. to that? That's a really good question. Um, I think for the most part, I was already there. I think okay. the way that I, I look at it, um, this is going to sound really bad, but um, is that, I mean, she's with me. She's, right. with me. she's committed to me. Why am I worried about, you know, the friends that she talks exactly. to my, on the phone or whatever? I don't care about it. At the end of the day, she's with me and she she's she's sleeping in the bed with me. So at the end of the day, that, right. that's really what matters. And and I think that I was at that place, um, you know, when I was 25, 26, that I was comfortable in saying that. Now at 22, 23, would I have been there? I don't know. Right. Um, like, but I think that is really key, Joe. You you have to you have to know yourself and you have to be comfortable enough with yourself first before and secure with yourself first before you can be secure in a relationship like that. Mm -hmm. And I had to you know, I think I was to the point where I know who I am and I know what I can take. And so I was comfortable with that. I appreciate that. And I, I think that's huge because a lot of the conversations now when it comes to relationships, especially with you being like young and you're both successful in your careers and you still look amazing, right? You're not one of those couples that are like, okay, they're obviously together, I'm not even interested in them, you know, like so there's got to be people on the outside that are always looking. It, even if you're not paying attention to them, there's going to be somebody that's interested, right? And this is a common conversation. I don't know about guys, but for girls, you know, we talk about, yeah, well, I'm committed, but that guy, this guy, this guy is looking still. So <laughs> how do you stay in that mindset of this is where I'm going to continue to work towards and everything else, I'm going to block it out. How do you block that out? Because I'm pretty sure y'all are getting all types of attention all around. Well, it's easier in COVID. I guess the DMs can still be popping. They not though, honey, they not. Um, good question, Latasia. Uh, gotta have some humor. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I just feel like so many people are shitty that it's easy. <laughs> Be like, uh, you absolutely wouldn't do what Jason is gonna do for me. <laughs> and I mean, and I think oftentimes when we get anybody, we all can get caught up in like attention or mm -hmm. oh, fine, okay, and he's looking at me. But to me, you don't know what that person even is like, and and personality, chemistry, that is all so important mm -hmm. to me. I mean, I probably could marry a frog if he was like taking out the trash, like loving on you. You know, like, and you're not a frog, dear. You're like, you're a bad one. So I'm like, <laughs> and, and I think I'm that fine, Jason, remember. you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Jason probably, well, I think me more than Jason, because like we even go to the gym together. Um, and not, you know, the gym that we have, we work with the trainers, shout out to Matt Scott. Um, he got us right for the wedding and has continued because Lord, you know, I'll be 12,000 pounds <laughs> if it wasn't for him. Um, but like, even in those spaces, I think it's a lot of men. Usually there's some women sprinkled in, but I do think about that. Like, hmm, what is this like? And what does it seem like? Jason just be over there like working out. <laughs> He's like, look, I'm here to get what I came to do. <laughs> and that's it. And so I think oftentimes to me, I'm not, you just block it out. Cause you're like, they're probably nuts. Like I can find a thing, something. I don't even have to know yeah. you very well and be like, you give me a lot of creepy vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, no, but I don't look at Michael B. Jordan on the Instagram. So, <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. So Adrian mentioned that I was through like about that. It's too expensive to get divorced. So that's why I'm, I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, but no, but, but really, I, I do think something that Adrian said is I mean, Adrian does so much and she fits so well, perfectly. It's almost like a puzzle piece. She fits really well into my life and we complement each other really well. And I don't, there's just no way in the world that I think that I would find anyone who would be as kind, as thoughtful, and does as many things as she does for us and for our house and for for us. So, you know, I, I and I, that's what I always think about. It's like, yeah, they may look good, but they ain't Adrian. So, Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's always important to keep in the back here, in the back of my mind. And I, and I 
that's what I do because this. It, and 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 I also think about too, um, past relationships and not to you know put anybody down, but when I think about you know what, what didn't work in those and maybe what were some of the gaps and holes and all of those, I mean, and what I was looking for in a relationship, I mean, Adrian checks all those boxes, and so right. he, you don't want to mess with that. You got something good, you don't you do not exactly right exactly. Yeah. Now that's that's amazing. I mean, because it's 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 wild out here. Not we're not like do not get back out here in these single streets. It, it's it's wild, but it just it's just so so much negativity is being romanticized, and I just yeah. I just can't get over it. Like I spent spent like ten years teaching healthy relationships, and then being able to see them like like watching you two interact. It's like I say, it's amazing because we don't really see it a lot. You know, we, we grew up watching the Cosby's, the Winslow's, the Banks's, and, and now, so I feel sorry for these generations of the children coming up now, but it's it's so amazing and refreshing to see you two, you actually like each other. It's like, <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's, that's, that's great. Like you actually like each other and then you're not intimidated by each other's careers. I miss a lot of stuff on social media. You can go like, well, if you're a woman, you shouldn't do this to get a man and all these things. But you're you're able to see the value in each other and you treasure the value in each other. And I just want to say, just keep keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing, because it's inspiring, especially for somebody like me who didn't get to see it a lot growing up. And so every chance I get to see it, I'm watching it. So I do thank you all for um, setting a great example of what real black love is. Yes, yes. Thank you for having us. <laughs> I know. And I was going, I'm so glad Joe did it because I was going to cry if I was going to try to end this. <laughs> Same way Adrian is a water bag, I am too. So, oh, good. <laughs> so, because we have that personal relationship, I thought it was important to bring y'all up here. Like I keep saying, you're young, you're successful, and you made sure you did things appropriately according to what you wanted to do. And yes. then evolved in your relationship as well. You didn't leave yourself behind in order to be with Jason or to be with Adrian. Yes. So I, I think that's one big thing that I want, you know, younger generations to see, or even those who are out there right now, they may be the same age, they may be older. We can definitely use this to educate and counsel all. Right. Um, it's a great example of sticking to yourself and, you know, figuring out how to build together as well. So definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate you here. You know. Yes. I'm not even gonna say no. I'm not gonna go sentimental on y'all today. So she wants, she wants to. She wants to. I've been itching. I've been itching to go sentimental, but you definitely have been a great model in my life. So I know when when I'm dealing with the bad and the ugly, I'd be like, look, this ain't like what Adrian and Jason. <laughs> You gotta go, even even to the point where y'all were giving each other turns and talking. You know, uh, Joe and I have been listen, looking at all the couples, and we're like, look at how they're even talking during the respect. What I remember, people I dated, where I would run over them, <laughs> <laughs> or they would run over me. <laughs> like, right. this is completely different to see that healthy role, the healthy model as far as a relationship and being a couple and just communicating and all the things all the great little nuggets that you provided along the way as far as how you made that balance work and so on. Those are definitely big right. things that I hope the people that are watching are taking home and so, jotting right. on themselves. Exactly. And, 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 and I view an audience. One of them, to me, one of the most important things that they said is they're not trying to change each other. Right. Mm -hmm. like you you got to understand when you get into a relationship with somebody, that's who this person is. So to try to change them for what you want them to be, that's not that's, that's not going to happen. You're wasting your time. And so the fact that you you all love, like, and respect who you are as individuals and didn't try to change that, it's amazing. So just, yeah, please keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you again for being here to the Stuckies. Mm -hmm. And to everybody who has listened in, we appreciate you listening to the 
Tay and Joe show. I'm there you go. There you go. Get it right. The Tay and Joe show. <laughs> the Tay and Joe show. And we'll hopefully you tune in for the next one. We have one more couple that we're going to cover for the Black Love series and Ode to Valentine's Day. But it will not be the last time you see us because we have so much right. to drag yeah. Joe into. And as long as he's willing to come with me, we're going to keep him going. <laughs> hey, I'm here. <laughs> so we'll see you next time. Thank you for coming. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.